uh, going to be a very impactful hurricane, as was said. And, and the, the good news and the bad news is it's a fast-moving hurricane. Uh, if it were slow, we would be getting more rain. It's faster. This is really going to be about surge and wind. And 150-mile-per-hour winds can be quite damaging. Uh, from some numbers I've seen uh, so far, there it could be a, on the order of $30 billion disaster, and most of it's going to be in the coastal areas that where it's coming in uh, uh, and taper off as it goes inland. Um, but compared that to what we're looking at from Florence right now, we're looking at a $60 billion uh, kind of estimate on damages from Florence, which was mostly a, a water, a rain, rain event, right? Um, and then last year, 2017, Harvey, Irma, and Maria uh, uh, produced damages of over $265 million. So and, and th this is adding up. Some of this has to do with uh, how much is... Um, affecting industry. In other words, you close down uh, major industries or major conduits to move goods and products around, and you see those cost estimates or the damage estimates rise. In this case, because there's going to be a bigger wind factor than we've seen in, than we did in Hurricane Florence, will this likely to be more covered by insurance? Well, you know, homeowners uh, will cover some wind. I don't know what the coverage will be. These will be huge damages, though. These winds, uh, Florida has put in building codes since Hurricane Andrew, but there's older uh, housing stock out there that's built under older code. Uh, these, this level of wind can easily rip roofs off uh, and cause damages. But if you have surge as well as uh, these, he was talking about the high, wet, Jay was talking about the high waves, uh, you, you, could, you could still have a lot of flooding impact, too. So that's covered under the National Flood Insurance Program. And if you don't have a flood insurance policy, then you will not be reimbursed for, for flood damages. And then it gets kind of complicated to figure out what's wind and what's flood. Where FEMA is concerned, the New York Times just had a big article about how uh, FEMA keeps shelling out billions of dollars to clean up after these storms with very little control over how that money gets spent. So the um, local municipalities and the states go in and sometimes rebuild a facility in flood-prone areas, which then just get damaged again. Should taxpayers be concerned about climate change, the role of FEMA, and how much we're doing to uh, mitigate the damages? Absolutely, and you're right. Uh, the money uh, is typically given over to the states in the form of grants. Uh, to rebuild, and they have to rebuild according to the standards and building codes that are in place. And if they're uh, in the flood insurance program, they have to build according to the flood standards that are in place. However, the flood standards uh, in most cases, uh, particularly due to climate change, are probably lagging behind what the real risk is. Uh, so, yes, uh, there needs to be some tighter uh, policies around where we develop and how we develop and incentivize good behavior and disincentivize developing in, in uh, high-risk areas. It's just going to cost the taxpayer more and more. Are storms really getting worse, or does it just seem that way, Sandra? Uh, well, you keep hearing everything's unprecedented. Uh, I'm starting to believe a thousand-year precipitation is not a thousand-year precipitation, right? Uh, but we do know for certain on some of these hurricanes that particularly these warm waters are intensifying them. And so we're, we're seeing even this, uh, this is October, uh, this hurricane rapidly um, turned into a Category 4 due to the, the fuel that was getting from the warm waters. Um, so uh, not more maybe, but certainly the, it's affecting the amount of moisture that they pull up into these hurricanes um, and, and, and perhaps the, the intensity due to the warm waters.